What's happening, MJ traders and investors? It's Rod with Pow Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth, your home for MJ stocks, crypto assets, news, and interviews. Also home to the best MJ community. Today is Thursday. It's March 14th. I hope you're doing awesome. And in this video, we're going to be discussing earnings season continues to roll on. We have a bit of a mixed bag. I'm going to basically go over a bunch of earnings in this video. Uh, I can't do a video on every single company. I wish that I could, uh, but with my daughter just entering the world a couple of months ago, life has been pretty hectic. So we're going to go over Grow Generation, we're going to go over the Cannabis Co., Terrasen, AYR, and Cresco earnings. We're just going to go over a high level overview. I'll try to keep this video somewhere around 10 to 15 minutes, and then I'll bring up the chart and we'll take a look at the technicals on each company here toward the end. But before we get to it, make sure to smash like, it helps support me in the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. If you're new, you can subscribe, tick the bell, all that good stuff, and you'll be notified on any future videos or when I go live. As always, this is not financial advice. This is for entertainment and informational purposes only. So never ever buy or sell anything based on anything that I write or anything that I say. Also, you can follow us over on X, formerly Twitter. The handle for that is at Group Pow. Going to be using that as my platform of choice going forward. So Cresco did beat in terms of its fourth quarter and um, on the revenue and EPS, and they are looking to new markets. So they're very hopeful on Ohio, and they're also looking at Florida and Pennsylvania as they look to adult use as well in the next couple of years. But if we take a look at the report here, I just want to bring up their cash on hand. So it generated 59 million in operating cash flows for the full year and ended the year with 109 million of cash and cash equivalents and restricted cash. And then in terms of analyst estimates, they had a pretty good quarter. They were expecting 181.81 million for uh, for the analyst estimate, and then it came in at 188.24 million actual. And then EPS, they were forecasting negative 0.0231, and earnings per share came in at positive 0.01. So a big beat there in terms of both EPS and revenue for the fourth quarter of 2023. And again, for those of you that aren't familiar with, uh, if a lot of people are thinking, uh, I've seen it time and time again on my videos, well, we're in Q1 2024. Why is this for the fourth quarter 2023? It's because some companies have fiscal year ends that are different than the actual quarter that we're in. So pretty much, I think everybody was fourth quarter 2023 and full fiscal year 2023 results. But again, not going to go into everything as it would take me literally hours to do that. Uh, but we'll just go over the analyst estimates, EPS revenue, and then basically how much cash they have on hand. And then we'll jump into the technicals and I'll give my thoughts and opinions on the price action in the days, weeks, months ahead. But if we take a look at air wellness, so AYR, they were expecting 114.47 million for estimate and actual was 114.84. So very slight beat there in terms of revenue. And then earnings per share, they were forecasting negative 0.2653, came in at negative 0.36. So a pretty big miss in terms of EPS there. And stock was, the sector was down quite a bit today as well, which again, we'll bring up the chart here in just a moment. But if we take a look at the cash position, uh, cash position on AYR, cash and cash equivalents sitting at 50.766 million. Moving on, we'll take a look at the Cannabis Co. So they had, I don't believe it was updated. If we go to investing.com, yeah, they didn't have anything updated here. It says August 14th. So just bring it up here on Moomoo Moo platform. So revenue, they were forecasting 127.497 based on six analysts, came in at 128.365 million. So they did beat in terms of revenue. I did want to bring up the report here. So yeah, fourth quarter, 114.3. Actually, let me just, that's AYR. So the, yeah, 128.3 and then 127.497 EPS came in for the fourth quarter. They were expecting negative 0.064. Pretty big miss there. It was negative 0.18. And just cross reference this, make sure that that's correct. Yeah, negative 0.18 when it's in brackets like that just means negative. So they did miss in terms of that. And then in terms of cash, the company ended the fourth quarter with 39.3 million in total cash, 3.5 million of which was restricted. Moving on, we'll take a look at Terrasend. So Terrasend, fourth quarter and full year 2023 results. I don't believe it was on investing.com. Yeah, they actually didn't have any analysts covering it. But if we bring it up here on Moomoo Moo platform, it does say that there was seven analysts and revenue came in at Actually, it was 89.204 million forecasted. We'll bring it up here. So for the fourth quarter, revenue was 86.6. So a slight miss there in terms of revenue. EPS 
was forecasted at negative 0.017. And if we scroll down here to see if it actually has the, this is one that I didn't have up here, December 31st, net loss. Yeah, negative 0 0.03. Yeah, so pretty big miss there as well. Forecasting negative 0 0.017. Not sure why that was so low. But yeah, net comprehensive net loss, it's saying negative 0 0.35. So pretty big miss there in terms of EPS. If we take a look at Growgen, so their Q4 revenue falls less than expected. Cash and cash equivalents and marketable securities, 65 million as of December 31st, 2023, along with no debt. Then if we bring up Growgen here, they were forecasting 45.52 million in terms of revenue, and it had a pretty big beat there, 49.5 million actual. EPS, pretty big miss though. They were forecasting negative 0.13, came in at negative 0.44. So overall, not a bad earnings in fourth quarter 2023 for most of these companies, but Cresco definitely stood out as the uh, the shining star of that. AYR was pretty decent, and there's been a lot of companies, I think Ascend Wellness as well, I didn't include that on here, but they're looking for a 280E uh, refund essentially, kind of following in the footsteps of True Leaf. So we'll see a lot of other companies said that they're basically looking into the legalese of all of it to see whether or not it makes sense for their companies to do so as well. But that's a trend that we can continue to see. And then obviously, if we get rescheduling, DEA approves Schedule 3 recommendation by HHS, which I think is the most likely scenario. And then in terms of most likely time frame, I think between now and the end of April, could be a couple months after that, but I think that's the most likely scenario. I think it'll be definitely you know, before the elections, because they'll have that 60 day comment period. And then they'll want to use that as, you know, what, look what we did during our uh, tenure here. And during our administration, we got it done, right. And Biden, there was some comments that he was actually working on getting reform done. So I, I think the most likely scenarios we get rescheduling, and then ultimately descheduling, but they'll take that incremental approach. And if you remember my video, I posted this quite a while ago. Now it was on, let me just get the exact date here. So March 2nd, 2024, I said, what comes first, $6 or $12? And this was when MSOS was at $9, so essentially $3 away from both. And it was a great poll because a lot of people, if we just go to the poll as well on the community tab here on YouTube, on the channel, you can see here that we had 113 votes and I was at the camp of thinking $6 and 61% said $12 and 39% said $6. And generally, what do we know about retail investors and the herd and the majority you know, of people? When the majority think a certain thing, it's usually the opposite. So it's usually that contrarian mindset. And I was in the camp of thinking $6. I made this video and did some technical analysis. And I was saying that I believe that the bottom on MSOS would be somewhere in the low $7 or high sixes. And we hit low sevens. I think we hit like 730. And then let's bring up the chart here on MSOS. So the low there was, yeah, 730 exactly. So low sevens, high sixes, we've already done, done low sevens, and there could potentially be high sixes in the cards. Because if we take a look at some of these names, it's bear flags on the weekly time frame for a lot of our names. If you take a look at Cresco Labs, it's a weekly bear flag targeting about 112. We've also got a bear flag on AYR. So AYR WF targeting about 116. We have the Cannabis Co dropping to a weekly lower low as well. So a lot of these names heading to weekly oversold, that could be a nice bottom target here as well. But yeah, TerraSan here it was here, estimate 89.39 million and then reported 86.6 million. And then estimate for EPS negative 0.014 and reported negative 0.18. So big miss there in terms of both, probably the least um, impressive. And then we could see EMA 12 and 26 bear crosses across a lot of these names as well, which you can see it's the case for for Cresco and AYR as well. Not so much on the Cannabis Co, but weekly oversold will potentially mark a bottom there. And like I said, a lot of names heading to weekly oversold and still yet to see their EMA 12 and 26 bear crosses. GRWG, kind of similar to the Cannabis Co, but very close to weekly oversold and dropping to a weekly lower low. So definitely bearish here. And then MSOS, it closed below the 10 week moving average. We saw a bear cross of the stochastic, which was the clue that happened in the first week of February. And then we just had a MACD bear cross a couple of weeks ago, first week of March, and well below the 10-week moving average. So this isn't looking good. Like I said, the S&P 500 showing some weakness, likely due for a correction down to around 500 or 495 for a nice, healthy correction and weekly higher low. And then 
We also have the 50 weekly there at 676. We also have the 200 day moving average at 691. So like I said, I think that that high sixes is going to be a nice area to target here for a bottom looking to play off that 200 day moving average and 50 weekly moving average there at 676. I think, I don't think we're going to get back into the fives. Uh, maybe we see a slight flush of $6, like a, a, a wick, a fast wick, hard and fast drop. It's really going to depend on, you know, the state of the broader market. If we get headwinds there, which is looking like it could be the case. So MJ not set up that great at the moment. If we do see continued weakness in the broader market, which would just be healthy, right? We know nothing goes in a straight line forever. And if we bring up the spy chart, spy was a weekly bull flag targeting 521. And we'll just get rid of this here. So you can see here, it was a weekly bull flag. I was doing a newsletter over the weekend, so I actually had to, uh, I actually deleted that. But yeah, if you go from the low here to the high, you can see here was a nice brief weekly higher low and then bull flag as long as we held 450 on that consolidation. We did, and then once we broke the high, the bounce there at 477.55, that confirmed the weekly bull flag. You just take your measured move from the low to the high there, move it out to your 0.382 fib, and it's saying targeting about 521 and we hit 518.22. So we're definitely due for weekly consolidation. We have no weekly support down to 466. So I wouldn't be surprised in the least if we back tested EMA 12 there on the weekly time frame around 495. And then EMA 26 is at 475. So we need to prepare for this downside. But like I said, I'm, I'm still in the camp of thinking that we're still going to struggle in the MJ space until big tech and crypto tops out once we see their bull markets come to an end, which I think could be over the next six to 12 months. The Fed is likely due. We know CPI was running a little hot. So the Fed is likely going to push out the interest rate cuts until the earliest at the summer. And then generally after we see interest rate cuts is when the market tends to top. And I'm still looking for Congress being banned from owning stocks as well to be a major top indicator and signal and sell signal and major momentum shift. But like I said, after Fed's cut rates, it doesn't mean we're going into a bear market the next day or that that day, right? Or even the next week or the next month. It's usually, it takes whales about six months to get in and out of positions, net long, net short. So I think after rate cuts, I think it's going to be somewhere around six to 12 months. Also the election year, right? In November. So I, I don't think it's going to be until 2025. I think we're going to see a massive blow off top for stocks and crypto into the end of the year and then maybe spillage into 2025. And then I think in Q1, Q2, definitely by Q3, I think in 2025, somewhere around Q1, Q3, 2025 is when we're going to really start to see selling pressure start to pick up. And that's when I think we're going to enter a multi-year bear market for big tech and crypto. And then I think we're going to see MJ with the biggest catalyst looming, uh, tons of catalysts looming, right? Florida on the ballot enacted potentially in 2025, Pennsylvania, Ohio coming online, Germany with the first pillar, second pillar in 2025. We have the MJ Act up for review here in Canada with a expected spring release. We also have potential excise tax switching to a percentage, which would save some companies, you know, tens of millions of dollars, all, almost up to about $100 million. Tilray said they'd save anywhere from 70 to 80 million. There's so many catalysts, safer banking, rescheduling in the US. So giddy up, it's time for MJ's time to shine here, but it could be, like I said, it could be another six to 12 months really before we start to see the broader market and big tech and crypto start to top out and finish its multi-year bull market and potentially enter a multi-year bear market. And then I think MJ could potentially, you know, dip pretty hard and fast with the broader market if we see some big drops there, but then I think it will recover and could be the best performing sector over the next couple of years as we look to enter a new multi-year bull market. And something similar happened in 2018 when, you know, 2017, 2018, when the crypto market went into like the biggest, basically alt season and bull market we've ever seen. Then once it topped out, MJ was legalized in Canada and that's when it, you know, went absolutely ballistic in 2018 when crypto started to bear market. So I think something similar is going to be coming down the pipeline, but let me know if you agree with me, disagree with me. I always love hearing from you. Appreciate all the support as well. Everybody who likes and shares the videos. And uh, also let me know in the comments section below what you think of these earnings. Uh, if there's any other videos you want me to do in the future as well, always love hearing from you. Going into it there though, it's Rod with Pow Group. Thanks again for joining us in the pursuit of wealth. We also have high tide earnings tomorrow after market close and then the conference call on Monday. So this is this will be super interesting. I'll be definitely covering that. But hope you have a great rest of your evening and we'll see you again on the next video.